Welcome back to another my tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about dynamics. And specifically, we're going to be talking about rigid bodies. Rigid bodies are really helpful. They can uh, cause they can make a lot of simulations. Usually in your first few classes of, of art school if you are going, you will learn things like the animations. So you'll learn like the bouncing ball. So you'll go from one side and you'll bounce and bounce and every time it bounces it doesn't get as high and it starts to roll and then eventually it stops. Well, I don't know about you, that took me a really long time to do that cause, and it didn't even last so long. It was like, what, two seconds? But with that, we can actually remake that whole thing in about four or five minutes max with just using dynamics. So today I'm going to talk about the active and passive bodies. I'm also going to talk about fields, which are up here. And here are our active and passive bodies. I'm not going to get into particles today. I'm going to have that in another tutorial. But let's just dive into it, shall we? The first thing we have to do is change our menu to dynamics, if you haven't done so already. Another thing we're going to have to do is go to the project settings. Or not project settings, sorry, just the settings. And you're going to go have to, you're going to have to go to the playback speed, change it to real time. Usually people have it at play every frame. We're going to have it at real time. for save. And uh, then also stretch out your time slider to 200. All right, let's go. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get them, click on the plane. And I'm going to click on Passive Rigid Body. And before I explain what it does, I'm going to show you. So up here, I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab the sphere. And I'm going to change this to an Active Rigid Body. Now, if you put now if you watch this, nothing happens. It's playing right now. It's 50, 60, 70, 80. It's not doing anything. Now the active shouldn't move. That's the whole point about it. Passive does not move unless we have it already keyframed. But the pa but the active should be moving. Right now it isn't. The reason why it's not moving is because it doesn't have a field attached to it. So we have, what we have to do is we have to attach a gravity field. Gravity simulates Earth's gravity, or you know what, you can actually change it to really any type of gravity. You can change it to the moon gravity if you feel like it. I usually stick with Earth because it's more realistic. But just have your object selected, which for me is the sphere with the active rigid body, and then I'm going to click on gravity. Now the gravity node is actually going to pop up right in the middle. And if you focus in on it, I mean, it's still, it's like infinitely small. You can never focus in on it really. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you do with it, you can move it off to the side. I usually just put them all into like one little area. It doesn't really matter. Um, it doesn't really matter how big it is or small it is, it won't have any effect on it. But what it is over here is the information. Now Earth's gravity is 9.8. So if we watch the bouncing, this ball will now bounce at Earth's gravity. Oh, look at that. That's so nice. That's cool. Okay. Now, I stopped at 163. Now, watch as I scrub back. Nothing happening. Nothing happens because it dynamically can't do that. What it has to do is you have to be reset back to 1, and then you can actually scrub forward if you feel like, but you can't scrub back. You have to go all the way back to frame 1. Kind of a pain in the butt, I know, but we know a way around it. I'm going to show you in just a minute. Now, the reason why this ball bounced upon at this plane is because this was a passive rigid body. Active rigid bodies cannot hit other, or sorry, they can hit, but they can't go through other passive bodies or active bodies. So if you have two active bodies colliding together, then they'll just bounce off of each other. It's the same if you have an active body hitting a, a passive body, just like in here. So here's our active hitting our passive. Now, I'm also going to make this an active, and I'm going to see what happens. Let's see, put it right above. I want it to hit right on the other active body. And in fact, I'm going to kind of give it like a dynamic tilt, you know, so it really does something. All right, click on it. I'm going to make it an active rigid body and push play. And you're noticing that it's not moving. That's because it's not click connected to the gravity node. So what we have to do is click on the node and then shift click on our object. And then we can go to fields, 
affect selected objects. So now when you click on it, you'll see that it has this little purple hue on it. That means that it's being affected by the gravity node. All right, so let's bring that back. And all right, let's play. All right, see that there? See how the cube is bouncing off the active body? That is very possible right there. That actually did happen. I did not know that's not a magic. I did not just pull a woolly over your eyes. No, that is real. That just happened. So let me explain to you what happened again. What we have is two active bodies hitting each other, but then they're hitting an active plane. If this plane wasn't here, it would keep going, like just free falling. Also, if this plane was not a passive, if it was just um, a body just sitting there, just nothing, an object, then it would actually pass through it. But because it is a passive body, like we made it, then they won't be able to move and they'll eventually come to a stop. Now this is really cool because we can make like a ton of different simulations. You could have huge balls, I mean you could have you could have really anything. You could have buildings collapse and having dynamic particles with that. You could make smoke. You could make a ton of different things using dynamics. Um, one thing that we're going to do, though, is I'm going to show you about baking out keyframes. Baking out keyframes is very important because Maya cannot handle that much uh, rigid bodies. Over here, you'll see it says rigid body right here. This right here is all the rigid body information that you can control. So that's just one. This is a second one, and there's also rigid body on the passive. Now, if I add like maybe six, seven more cubes with balls hitting around, then Maya will actually start to lag and slow down and then eventually crash the machine because it just can't handle it. Usually, I stick to about, if I have a six-sided object or so, then I'm going to only have maybe ten of them. But if it's like a hundred sides or so, I'm just going to have the single one and that's all I can have as an active body. Like this right here, even here there's a lot of faces because what's happening is the faces are actually colliding with the faces here and they're reacting to it. So you can see that like the cubes faces are hitting and are reacting to the sphere. So now we're gonna bake out the keyframes and yes that is actually what it's called, bake out the keyframes. Now for this, what we're going to do is click on our two objects, not the passive, just the active, because what we want is the keyframes. If we actually want to render this out, we want the keyframes on this, like in animation. So let's click on both of them, and what we're going to do is go to Edit, Keys, Bake Simulation. I'm just going to click on here. Now you can do, you can pick your channels, like you can, uh, if you go over here, you can do translate through rotate for from the channel box it says so like channels from channel box so I selected mine and I bake that out usually it's alright if you go with alt keyable but sometimes if you want to save on like memory then you want to just do translate and rotate but alt keyable is just fine time range so is the whole slider that's fine by me and let's bake all right, so now as you can see, we have keyframes on each object. But they're actually still uh, rigid bodies right now. So they're rigid bodies and they have keyframes, which is just like a double. So we really don't need that. In fact, we have to get rid of the rigid bodies. So the way we get rid of the rigid bodies is we go to Edit, Delete by Type, Rigid Bodies. So make sure they're selected and you delete by type. So right now there's no rigid bodies left on them. So as you can see we can actually scrub back oh, and scrub forward. Now the gravity node won't disappear. Now if, oh actually, no, this one's still, this one is actually still a rigid body. So let's delete that as well. Here we go. Now both of these are out. Alright, so we're good. Don't want to crash my on us. So this gravity node will stay around as long as you need it. If you don't need it anymore, just delete it. You can make another one later. And uh, now, if you want, you can play blast this or make a render file. All right. Uh, later in some of my other tutorials, we're going to talk about particles. And we're even going to go even farther into rigid bodies and see what else we can do with them. Uh, we're also going to have a tutorial about the different type of fields. Because we only talked about the gravity today. But there's actually a ton of other ones, including turbulence, which is one of my favorite nodes. All right, 
If you like this, please uh, push like on the YouTube video. And if not, have a great day. Bye.